Narcissists are essentially emotionally stunted children with an adult savviness for ruthless manipulation. Their facade is a mask they wear to assert superiority and entitlement in order to avoid any feelings of invalidation. Narcissists are bullies who ambush, attack, control, abuse, and prey on the vulnerable. They often abuse people in hospitality positions because it's easier to get away with, because they have a relentless need to feel powerful and superior with a lack of empathy. Narcissists are cowards who are fundamentally terrified of who they truly are and that anyone might find out. Think Joffrey Lannister when he's unarmed by Arya Stark, a little girl in front of his betrothed, Sansa Stark. Despite Sansa's compassion and concern for his tiny arm wound, Joffrey immediately turns on her. He hates her from that moment on because she saw who he truly was, a coward with zero skills in battle. A narcissist's life's motivation is to protect themselves from any negative feelings that trigger their subconscious sense of inferiority. They are liars who spend every waking moment trying to control other people's perception of them. They hate themselves, but they hate others more, and everything they do is an attempt to gain superiority. A fraud is a person or thing intended to deceive others, typically by unjustifiably claiming or being credited with accomplishments or qualities. Narcissists are frauds at love, parenting, friendship, and any other important relationship in life because they lack the ability to recognize and empathize with others' experiences and emotions. Narcissists are incapable of authentic intimacy, kindness, or selfless giving. All narcissists wear a mask, a false persona that is, in order to hide a vicious and vulnerable weakness. However, they will never willingly take off the mask Rather, they will protect it at all costs, including using a full arsenal of controlling and abusive strategies. This is Mom's Murder Madness. On the evening of October 23, 2017, 20 year old Jeffrey Scullin called 911 in a panic because he had just found his future mother in law, Melinda Pleskovic bloody on the kitchen floor. Somebody, somebody's been attacked in my house. Somebody's been what? Attacked. They attacked who? Who was attacked? Yeah. Uh, Did someone I, get uh, my fire? Uh, Mel Pluskovic. Mel Pluskovic was attacked. He was attacked by whom? Do you know? She, she was, no, we, we just came home. She's on the kitchen floor. I, I, took the, I took her son and my daughter outside. Her husband is inside with her now. So the husband attacked her? No, no, no. We just came home. We just came home. You came just home and found her injured on the floor? We found her in the kitchen. She's not moving. I, I took the kids and I walked outside. I didn't know so what So did she look like she was beaten or what? She, she has blood all around her. I didn't, I didn't look. I just got, I grabbed the child and left. Can you okay. please someone here? I am. I am. Hold on a moment. Don't hang up, sir. Do not hang up. Sir, is there a dog at the house? No. Maybe the dog got out. Does she have a black lab? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send medics. Don't hang up. Is she conscious? Do you know? I I don't know. I, okay. I, hold on. So we have two small kids. Okay. Okay. Outside. Okay. Hold on. I'm gonna get fire going. Hold on a moment. Sir. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Yeah. All right. I have the medics and police responding. Okay. All right. I need to get. There's a lot of blood. Okay. Yeah, I only got. Fire, but I, I'm outside. How do you know this woman? Is she? I live here. I live here. She's my fiance's mother. It's your fiance's mother. Okay. Yes. Is she like had anybody trying to harm her, harass her, anything like that? I, I no, no. Okay. Do you have a dog that lives at that house? We, your... we have we have two. We have two dogs. Okay. Are the dogs there? Or you don't know. I, I don't know. We just walked in the front door. Okay, because we got a phone call from somebody who found a dog that belongs at your residence. That's why I'm thinking the dog's got out, okay? What is your name? He's right here. I have okay, who's talking to you right now? Uh, her husband. We just came home together. I'm telling you, is she conscious? She's, she said she has multiple stab wounds, and he's on the phone with somebody else. Okay, she's got multiple stab wounds. That's what he just came out and told me. We hear the ambulance. Okay, they're coming, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, sir. Okay, sweetie. They think she's got multiple stab wounds. All right. Okay, so who's... That's her husband? That's, uh, that's her husband. He yeah. and Melinda's husband, Bruce Pleskovic, had just returned to their home that they shared with Jeff's fiance, their daughter, Anna, their baby girl, and Melinda and Bruce's disabled adult child, Kyle, who has Down syndrome and is nonverbal. Bruce and Melinda Pleskovic raised their children in the quiet town of Strongsville, Ohio. Melinda was a pillar of the community, working as a teacher and also coaching the women's varsity soccer team. Inexplicably, the Pleskovic's daughter, Anna, began dating Jeffrey Skolin while in high school, despite not having Lannister looks, money, or charisma. After they graduated, they got engaged and conceived a daughter. Being a young couple, they needed a lot of help. Anna worked as a waitress at Applebee's, and Jeff claimed to be doing some part-time work, but at the time of the murder, he told police that he was unemployed. To help out, the Pleskovics offered to let Anna, Jeff, and their baby live in their basement rent-free so they could save up for their own place. They all existed like one big happy family and were excitingly planning Anna and Jeff's wedding. The Pleskovics got along well with the easy-going Jeff. Anna and Jeff scheduled their wedding for October 2017. Unfortunately, months after Jeff moved in, weird occurrences started taking place over the Pleskovic's home. Cash started coming up missing after Jeff moved in. Small bits like ones and fives at first, then larger amounts. The family was worried because they believed they were being targeted. When Jeff was home alone one day, he said that someone tried breaking in. He saw someone reach their arm through the sliding glass door but was able to scare the intruder away. They would also see people wandering around their yard, but luckily, Jeff was usually there to thwart any burglary attempt. Car keys were taken and used to start their cars or set off their alarms in the middle of the night. On another occasion, Bruce found nails in one of his tires. They always reported these incidents, but there wasn't much for the police to go on. Melinda Pleskovic's Facebook account painted a more in-depth picture of the break-ins as she posted about eerie incidences happening in her home. Quote, Whoever has stolen my keys was playing with the remote at 4.30 a.m. and kept starting the van at 7, one post from Melinda's Facebook account said. She wrote a follow-up comment that said, Set off car alarm with stolen remote again last night and found nails in Bruce's tire. In June of 2016, Anna Pleskovic made a call to police reporting suspicious boys in the backyard. She called police again in November, complaining of unknown boys knocking on the back door and peeking in windows. Bizarre break-ins plagued the home in the months that followed, even just days before Melinda's death. Anna recalled during her police interviews how her wallet and her money would go missing constantly. Quote, Sometimes just the wallet and sometimes just the money would go missing. I would get a new wallet, then find the old one months later in a random spot that I never would have put it, like Kyle's room. Would Kyle take your wallet? asked police. We thought maybe it was him, but well, I don't know. Disappear off the counter? So when things turned up missing at home, he said one time he said even you were home alone. Home alone. And and home alone and things would missing. disappear off the counter? Yeah. And I'm just like I don't understand. Now, how, what would out, you? Cry. What would you? How would you explain that? When you say home alone, you mean you totally alone, oh, or was totally alone. not you and Jeff? No, or no baby, you? no nothing. Just me. Doors I'm locked. Alone. Yeah, I keep the doors locked. I'm very like right. Weird about that. Sure. Now. Would that be after there were keys missing? I mean, was was your this explanation was before the keys? Before the keys were missing, I um, that was just kind of gross. I started keeping my money in my shirt. Mm -hmm. It's the only way it doesn't go missing. Sure. I know it's okay. not sanitary, but it's the only way I don't lose my money. Yeah. Okay. Um, so where's your mind go with that? I mean, how does stuff disappear from inside of a locked house while you're home alone? I speculated so much. I cried and freaked out. I don't know. And. Then I just kind of block it out, just yeah. or else I'm just going to lose my mind thinking about it. Tell me who, who has keys to your house. My family. Meaning? My mom, my dad, me, Jeff, Megan. Okay. Okay. But not right now. Well, right. just 
Not everybody Not right now is here with all the keys. Did um was it was anyone ever else ever home alone when things turned out missing? Mm -hmm. Do you recall any instances of it happening with, with anyone else? Most of us were home? usually home for all of these. Maybe one person missing, like my mom or Jeff or my dad. But everybody else would be at home when something would go missing. Something would go missing with uh, everyone home. Yeah. Or some a few times with just you home. Yeah, sometimes just me and my dad and Jeff. Me, my mom, and my dad. Like, it's just, it's random. Is it reasonable that somebody would come, could come into the house unseen and take something and get out? I guess. Okay. There's got to be some way in. My parents also have a window that goes right onto the roof, and there's like an archway. Really have to climb, but it's accessible. Gotcha. To a point. I tried to climb up there, but I During Bruce's police interrogation, he is apprehensive about outright accusing Jeff, but talks in depth about how none of these mysterious things happened until Jeff moved in. This year is this weird things going missing, things getting stolen out of my car, keys going missing. Our car, someone has our car keys and our car alarm has been going off, you know, every so often, you know. It, and we thought, we think it's a neighbor and we think it's someone else. You know, it's kind of, you know, I'm going to wait until see what you guys but this stuff hasn't happened until they were living here in our, in our basement. Now, I'm not suspecting them of anything. I did, you know, we did confront and ask, you know, Jeff and Anna, you know. But he... You asked them what? If they, if they took the money or if they grabbed them. You know, I, I'm not one to accuse, but you guys didn't grab the money. You know, at some point, you gotta, they got to know we got to wonder if they're doing this or not. And... I mean, he's going... It's just been all, you know, these attempted break-ins. I wasn't there when these things happened. I don't think it's all bullshit. I mean, it, it theoretically it could be. Do you notify us every time that occurred? Yes, there's a, there should be a few notifications. About, of about how many, you think? Four, four or five. I think Mel calls them in, or I, I, Jeff says he does. I don't... All this year? Yeah, well, everything's this year. How long is uh, Jeff and Anna been living in the home? Uh, when she when they, when they announced she was pregnant, so that would be if the baby is over a year, so let's say two years. No, I, I'm not trying to blame them. I just no, no, I just. But I'm, when I look back and think through some stuff, it's like these things are happening, but I'm not there when these things happen. I, when I, I've lived in that house 16 years, and we you know we back up to the common area there. And over there, there's always been some kids playing back there. These br attempted, these break-ins, kids kicking the door. The one time was one of the story. You know, there's a group of kids that are all 15. They did this, and Jeff was in the basement when this happened. I wasn't there. I didn't see it happen in the middle of the night. I was asleep. Another one, two guys with hoods walked up to the back room there, and or the dog was. I don't. I don't know if, if this actually happened or if he's making it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking right. I, I, I'm not trying to put him on the spot or anything, but I, I wasn't, I wasn't there in the middle of the night when it was about two forty-five, and that everyone was woken up and wondered, and these guys took off all of a sudden. They, when Jeff grabbed the door, these two guys grabbed the door, and all of a sudden they took off. And then the, this last one yeah. was this past Thursday. Someone tried to open the door, and this kid took off. He jumped over the creek and was gone. If I'm going on his word that these things happen. Mm -hmm. And if, if he was yeah. making it up, what would be your theory of why why would you think he'd make that up? I don't know. But, but here's an, uh, one thing. I want him to do a lot more stuff around the house, like here and there. He says he can do this, this, and that, and he would, he'll do this, he'll fix this, fix it, and then it doesn't get done. And that's another reason Thursday I kind of... He did cut down the tree in our yard, but I... You know, we cleaned it up and it was all good, but I thought he was going to do the stumps, you know, pull the stumps out. But if it's too wet, he can't do it. But if it's dry, he can. And we had four great days this week, and he's talking about doing it. And then two days later, he doesn't, you know, well, it's time, that time goes by, he doesn't do it. And he says, well, I had to work on my rental houses. It's like, it's that kind of stuff all the time. So, it's just, I don't, I don't think he's making this up. I don't know. But now, what happened today, I don't think... However, life continued on for the family as they were nearing the wedding date. 
and the murder. As for the wedding, Jeff agreed to pay the venue and send out his portion of the invitations. Bruce and Melinda were going to take care of everything else. Jeff also bragged about buying a home for himself and Anna after the wedding with a cash down payment from his grandparents. Unfortunately, a week before the wedding, Melinda received a call from the venue saying they needed to pay the fee or they would have to cancel. She was told that Jeff's card had been declined 14 times. Melinda paid them and planned on confronting Jeff. He hadn't sent out his invitations like he promised either. For some reason, Jeff's parents weren't involved in the wedding planning. They didn't even like the Pleskovics, according to Jeff. Bruce and Melinda were perplexed and disheartened that the Sullins didn't want to be friendly. That's why they were so excited when Jeff told them that his mom wanted to meet for dinner and even reimburse Melinda for the venue that Jeff was supposed to pay for. This meeting was supposed to occur on the night of the murder. Jeff kept changing the plans, which Bruce found odd. He then received a text right before he was about to leave for work from Melinda's phone, inferring that she was going to meet him at the restaurant. But the way it was worded was not how his wife would text. Bruce showed up at the restaurant and nobody was there. He couldn't get a hold of Melinda or anybody, so he left to go to the gym. He got a call from Anna saying to meet the family at Applebee's where she worked followed by numerous calls from Jeff saying the same thing. When Bruce got there, Jeff was waiting with the baby. He became worried when Melinda wasn't there. Her phone was off and neither he nor Jeff had talked to her. Jeff stated that he wasn't able to get into the house because the security code was not working. Bruce became more concerned, but thought maybe something came up that needed Melinda's attention. He hurried through his meal and walked out with Jeff and the baby. Jeff's truck needed gas, so before dinner, he grabbed a couple of full containers from his dad's house. Jeff asked Bruce to mine the baby while he filled up his truck. Bruce noted that it was taking forever and it seemed like he was purposely being stalled. Anna gave Jeff keys, but when they got to the house, he acted like they weren't working. They were let into the house by Kyle, the disabled son, and found Melinda lying on the floor in a pool of blood. Jeff called 911, who told dispatch, Somebody's been attacked in my house. Bruce called 911 at the same time. Quote, You know we've asked people to watch our frickin' area. We've had people attempt to break in just this week. I don't know what is going on in this city, but this is getting done here. You people drop the, this whole city is getting freaking taken over. I can't believe this. Jeff said he took his daughter and Kyle outside after seeing Melinda on the floor. She has blood all around her. I didn't look. I just grabbed the child and left, Jeff told police. Jeff and Bruce said they found Melinda's body at the same time. The two said they returned home from Applebee's after the family was supposed to meet there to discuss upcoming wedding events. Melinda never showed up. One of the first officers to respond to the crime scene testified that he believed Melinda knew her killer as the numerous stab wounds on her body suggested anger amid a crime of passion. Melinda's funeral would be held at St. Paul Lutheran Church on Bagley Road. Bruce and Jeff would serve as pallbearers. Afterwards, Melinda was buried at the Strongsville Cemetery on Pearl Road. The family members were interviewed separately. Anna's sister Megan was interviewed, who provided some insight into the dynamics between Melinda, Bruce, Anna, and Jeff. Megan said Melinda was afraid that Jeff was going to take the baby and leave. Melinda clearly had a deep distrust for Jeff, something the rest of the family referred to as paranoid thinking. But clearly, she was right. According to Bruce, Melinda was the one to call Jeff out most of the time. While the other family members were more passive, Melinda would look Jeff in the face and confront him every time he did something weird. To the narcissist, this was extremely threatening. All his lies and manipulation weren't working on her. Jeff told them his mother wanted to meet for dinner and already agreed to pay $6,500 for the wedding. But Jeff told detectives his mother did not know about the dinner, that he hadn't invited her yet nor asked her for money. Jeff tried to paint Kyle, the disabled son, as violent by saying he hit the baby and kicked the baby, that he was jealous of the baby's attention. Bruce and Anna dispute that. Jeff tries to paint Melinda as a mean lady who yells at people all the time implying the killer could be anyone because she was so unlikable. Jeff tried to portray Bruce as an alcoholic who gets mean while drunk, implying he could possibly get violent. Police noticed scratches on Jeff's face during his initial interview. 
When asked about it, he insists it's from a minor fender bender. Police talk Jeff into taking a lie detector test. He fails miserably. Meanwhile, upon investigating the vehicles, a large tactical knife with human blood was found in Jeff's pickup truck. Simultaneously, the cops began searching for surveillance footage in the neighborhood to check Jeff's story about the house break-ins. Surveillance footage from a neighbor shows the exact date and time Jeff reported the break-ins, and to no one's surprise, it never happened. No one tried to break in through the glass doors. Forensics came back on the knife. The blood on the blade belonged to Melinda. Jeff's DNA was also found on the handle of the knife. They had also found blood on the door handle of the passenger side. Confronted with the evidence and arrested, Jeff confessed. His confession was full of mumbling nonsense. During his confession, Jeff's explanation is completely asinine. He says Melinda found a paternity test and a gun in his room. The test proved that Jeff was the father, yet she was angry that he might not be the father somehow? That she misinterpreted the test? Even so, Melinda was not insane like that to blame Jeff for her daughter lying about the paternity of her grandchild. So that's a lie. Maybe she did find a gun, but the most she would say is like, Hey Jeff, you need to be more careful where you store these guns because there's a baby in the house. I mean, hello, this is Ohio, USA. As Americans, we don't freak out at the sight of a gun, usually. I mean, unless it's pointed in our face or something. No, it's not easy. No, it's not easy. went downstairs and found that stuff, I'm pretty sure, or she was looking through stuff. Oh, okay. She also had uh, a piece of paper that Aurora might not have been mine for the longest time. What's and that? Oh. An infidelity committed on Anna's part. Okay, okay. Which was an iffy subject with me and Anna. Okay. She found that, and the, the gun and the knife. Okay. And then what did she say? I don't remember, to be honest. Was she threatening to... So, she's down in your room, she's... She sees the guns, she sees the knives, she has... She sees, you said, some paper. Did she have the paper, or is this paper you and Anna have? It was a paper for me and Anna had. Okay. I don't know where it is, but she said she saw it. Okay. And it was on a paternity test? Yes. Okay. So are you and are you Aurora's father? Yes. Okay. But she's kind of speculating that maybe you're not. Yes. Okay. So that's not great. Right. Okay. No, no, that that's great <laughs> stuff. So that goes to the why. Okay. So she's I don't remember what happened after that, I'm sorry. That's fine. Well, you know what? You did pretty well on breaks. I'll, you know, we'll talk about it some more. Uh, I'll give you, you some breaks. I'll get, I mean, when I left the room, to just give yourself some time to, to think. I can't. I don't okay. know what's wrong with me. I can't remember it all. You know what? You are remembering, and that's sometimes how our memory works. It works slow, and I was at the gas station. And I'm so confused. Well, I'm not going to say that you weren't necessarily at the gas station. You weren't at the gas station at the time that you told the police you were. Got him. Right? Do you understand that? No. Okay. I'm sorry. You you told the police you were you you left the house around three after after Kyle got off the bus. That never happened. Okay. But you told the police you did, and then you ran out of gas for a period of time, and then a good Samaritan came, and then after he gave you some gas or which you purchased, then you drove over to get go to, to fill up to, to put some more gas in your vehicle, right? Yes. Okay. That might have happened, but it didn't happen in the time frame you said it did. Okay. So I'm going to ask them to go back and check all the time for the entire day. But but that's not even a even something that's germane for us. Okay. The real issue is, just like you said, uh, Melinda is, was in your room. She saw the guns. What did she say about the guns? Uh, she didn't. She just found that one. Oh, okay. But I don't even remember that one being there. I don't know. 
Well, you did remember it there, because you just told me she found the gun that was in the room. Was there a fight about it? Was she yeah. threatening you with it? She just asked why I was there. Okay. So she asked why the gun was in the house. Maybe she's like uh, saying, why would you have a gun in this house because there's a baby in the house or something like that. But what was she saying about the gun? She just asked why I was there, but that's... Okay. Why well, there? she asked about the test and everything. And then what did she say about the knife? Nothing. Okay. But you said she found the knife. What do you mean she found the knife? Because the knife was with the gun? Yes. Okay. Okay. I don't understand. I can't remember what happened afterwards, to be honest. Okay. So, she's in your room. She finds the gun that ultimately was used that that was used in the shooting. She found the knife. She found the knife because it was with the gun. She found a, a paternity test. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the paternity test shows that you're the father. Yeah. Okay. Well, obviously. And, and you are the father? Uh -huh. Okay, good, good. So something happened where she went, she must have left, ran, maybe she, she must have threatened you, she must have did something because she, she was ultimately, uh, you know, injured in the back, okay? So the back. What? Well, did you shoot her from the front or from the back? I know she was she was lean, she was found how was she found face down or face up I don't know. right but you were there I mean you, you found her right with with Bruce right just you two right yes okay yes. okay was she face down meaning her face towards the, the, the floor or was it looking up? Down. Okay, okay. So my understanding are the wounds were in the back. Maybe they came from the front. I'm, I'm not. That's up to you. That's what I want to find out from you. But it sounds like she finds the gun. She gets upset. She finds the you know the knife's there. She's concerned about this paternity test, and this creates a lot of anger in you, as you said. It makes me mad, and. You know, maybe you maybe you grabbed the gun and then it went off. Is that what happened? Is that when you grabbed the gun and it went off? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. And how many times do you remember shooting it? I don't remember. Okay. I grabbed the gun. It went off. Uh... Did she continue out of the area, or did it, when the gun went off, where were you? Were you... I'm sorry, what? What was the reason why you grabbed the gun, and then it went off, and ended up shooting her? What was the reason for that? That's what I want to understand. That's what we, we need to let Aurora know. She picked it up and kind of didn't necessarily point it at me, but pointed it near me. Oh my god. It wasn't at, at me. So she was threatening you? You took she it as a... She was screaming at me. Okay. I don't know. She screamed? So she picked up... I'm right now. That's... She, that's... I'm so... I hit her so bad. Okay. So she's screaming at you. She picks up the gun, points it in your direction. What do you do? Do you grab it from her? That's where I don't understand. Well, you got it somehow. What's that? I just reached up and grabbed it. Okay. I reached up and grabbed it. And then... And, and that's when you responded and, and it went off? So, you felt threatened by her? For a minute, yes. Okay. Okay. I felt... Uh, threatened by her, and 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 that's what made you. Is that what made you so mad? No, she was yelling, 
Aurora isn't yours, Aurora isn't yours. It's just a million things. Okay. So she's she's down there, she finds the paper, she sees the gun, she picks it up, points it at you. She, she pointed it like at my feet. Okay, she points the gun at your feet and she's yelling at you, Aurora isn't yours, Aurora isn't yours. Is that, is it, did I understand that right? Yes. Okay. And it, and that's when you grabbed the gun and it went off? Yeah. Bruce and Anna both suffered from moderate to severe ADHD. So Jeff saw them as more vulnerable. They were easier to lie to and distract by changing the subject or gaslighting them into thinking he really said or meant something other than what they recall, which was less threatening to him. For example, no, I didn't say my mom knew about the dinner. I wanted it to be a surprise. Melinda did not have ADHD, so she could easily stay focused on pointing out inconsistencies in Jeff's stories without getting frustrated. As someone with ADHD and other mental health issues, it can be very frustrating and exhausting mentally when people change plans, change their stories. During his interview, Bruce had a hard time staying on topic. When asked about Kyle's medication and doctor's names, he would say, well, Melinda is the one who really keeps track of all that which I fully relate to. Some tasks are emotionally challenging, so if you have a partner that's good at organizing, it's just easier to let them handle it. This is why Bruce is removed from the nuances of the wedding and the payments and the exact details of the break-ins and missing money, etc. There were things that were yeah. you know, happening the last few months. You said that you weren't home when these things happened. Were you home ever, like when their car went off? Well, the alarm went off. I, of all the times it did happen, I saw it once maybe twice the alarm but they but Jeff has seen it and Mel has seen it so many times and that thing going on and off see I get up early and I go to sleep earlier but sometimes I'm up in the night with Kai you know because mm -hmm. or not not being able to sleep for stress or whatever mm -hmm. reason or you know real life you know ever since you have kids you just don't sleep I don't bet so <laughs> I've seen it once or twice, but not as often. Not as often. And the kid, when the kid, the one time at 2.45 when the two guys came to the back sliding glass door, and that's when we realized we better just keep all the lights on. Because I, I used to, I put those lights on and I actually angle it up so it went out to the grass a long time ago. So it would keep kids, people from yeah. messing with it. You know, it, back then it was just little harmless kids doing stuff. And yeah. some of them would try to push off, you know, a little, you know, you guys have one or two, you know, delinquents in it. Try to push the envelope, but to go this far and see what happened, I I, I didn't think it was going to be like that. I didn't think I I thought someone was just messing with us, but I didn't. but then I felt like after a while, is it are we getting targeted? Is somebody watching out for someone else to break into our house and just steal a little bit of money? Because because we had you know how Mel, Mel run ran soccer stuff and she ran the teams and then she'd collect checks and cash from people on Fridays. This is a, this is a routine we've been doing for years. And earlier this year, I was. I was on the couch sleeping, in, I'd say March or February, this is when the first hint of maybe theft going on and, or something, you know, it started this chain of this year of things. And I was sleeping and Mel said, yeah, I have the soccer money because, you know, I work at the bank and I just make the deposits. She, she cuts the check for it or puts it on the credit card and then we just reimburse her, you know. Sure. Just, and the cat, I'll, it, you know, I'll just put it on the table over here. It's like, okay, then I just fell asleep. I mean, I try to fight, not take naps, but I know when I have to shut it down with being up sometimes and lose short sleep or whatever. And all of a sudden you wake up and it's not there. It's like, and you're thinking through it. And I don't know how many scenarios like that where maybe I misplaced it because we're just coming and going so much, you know. How many times, how many times would you ask me that money was missing? Okay, that was for one. And that was in what month? I'm guessing February or March. It started. And how much was soccer? It? it was like four hundred dollars in cash plus a bunch of checks, or three hundred dollars in cash, three to four hundred in that range of cash, and and some checks. I think the total was five or six hundred. Where are the checks on the table? Yeah, the table? she says she was putting on the, everything is like on the kitchen table. That's where we keys, Mel's purse. Yeah. Just, you know. And what what about what about the other times? How much money? Would it be twenty dollars um, here and there, or is well, it, uh, about two years ago. <laughs> I was in the middle of the night and I heard some jingling in my room and Anna tried to steal some money from me. She was, you know, she's, 
it's like, and I think she's, <laughs> and so ever since I'm thinking, well, she did it like that, would she take this much? And that, you know, I, you know, I, I can't, okay. Yeah. I'm like, I feel like I have to be a detective when these things happen. Yeah. Okay, who would do this? What are the scenarios? And then you speculate, and you, and I think I was doing a lot of speculating the first night here tonight, and trying to draw conclusions based on the animal. conversation sure. with, mm -hmm. and just watching the people in my house or outside, I don't know, in comments and statements, but you. But uh, I've, okay, I'll get back to that. I, even recently, I lost eighty bucks, but that was probably just misplaced on my own because I do our lottery pull at work, and. I mean, the money that's missing I, I mean, is it, it, I think it, the money. But I try to hide it in my bag, you know, put it yeah, in place in my bag. What I'm asking, the money that's missing, I understand this is on the table, but the majority of the time, is everybody's money in their wallet, in their, their, wallet, in their purse, or your wallet? And yeah, normally so I have a wallet. Is the money wallet? I've always used the wallet. Okay, um, have but, you had money missing but from I have you money, personally? But I have money in envelopes. Yes, I have. But, but from your wallet? But or it, laying out? I think a couple times in the wallet, sometimes in a in, a, in an envelope. You know, I actually in some cases I think I dropped the money in the lot, like misplaced. Like I went through the CVS drive-through and I had I thought I had the money on me there. It's since I'm flying around so much, I just can't remember. That's why I have to have this bag and centralized stuff yeah. because I've, but I. But the, the times that so you bad. can remember, you specifically remember a time where I know I had. X amount of money in my wallet, and now I have none, or I have. Or it might be a little light. But that's little fine. Light. But if they want, if Mel needs the money, when it takes money. But do you money. remember times like that where? It it, maybe two or three times. Yeah, but, it, it seems, but that would be little money, twenty or four. But maybe yeah. I spent it, and I didn't realize I spent it. Yeah, kind it, of thing. You got to retrace your steps. And, yeah, it just seems unusual. But, but um, that that yeah. side of money was the real deal. That was a lot. Yeah. To that that was a definite. I'm just. And I'm just wondering with those break two. You know, people come up. Was I sleeping? Did someone actually have yeah. minutes? We yeah, and I understand go, that. I'm go. thinking, you know, if money is missing from a wallet, they're going to take your whole wallet. You know, while yeah, you're you, yeah. And it doesn't. And it's not that we don't have break-ins and, and somebody taking yeah. money and valuables, but to have a reoccurring pattern where there's money missing and maybe, but maybe my, your could, wallet's it, it light. Could be my own. Yeah, it could be my own. Right. I just don't get why. No, I don't get why the dinner plans. I heard all these different things. It's always like this. Things are always going to be. You're going to do this. Going to do that. That doesn't happen. It changes in a hurry. It seems like it seems like you're always yeah. on the outside looking in. Is that the case? Exactly. Yes. Does that upset you quite a bit? Uh, well, like you, it. no. You, you want things to. No. It. it well, you, you just want to know what what, you, what you're doing. You just want to know what the plans are. Let's at least figure out what we're doing here. <laughs> Right, but it just seems like I'm not. Uh, no, like every, it, I don't have any animosity like about being the. Every, every in, in this situation, I don't mind not being on the outside looking in. It's okay. It's yeah, no deal. It's just uh, like I said, it's like every aspect. But why does it? I don't get why. I don't understand, with in lieu of what happened, why. Uh, Mel and the mom were supposed to get together for dinner. There was something going. She was gonna give him the. It's only sixty five hundred fucking dollars. They, they kill her for sixty five hundred fucking dollars. Mm. It's not that. If he has a house that he paid cash for, that he said, I can't see that being a fucking thing. Mm -hmm. If he paid, if that's the case, if they did that. Mm -hmm. Did they actually? Did he actually buy this house? I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to. It's right by. Trying to tip out on things and try to get an idea of what happened tonight, leading up to what happened. What happened so yeah, I, I, that's all we're trying to do. No, no I know. I know. Did you find your cell phone at all? Uh, okay, Bruce. Um, let's get out of here. Um, I need to talk to Jeff. Okay. Okay. Um, I appreciate you coming in and willing to talk to us. And yeah, it's. We appreciate your time. You know, I, yeah. I'm sorry for uh, you know what you had to go through tonight, and uh, obviously I'll be in contact with you. Right? I'll give you a car before before we leave, yeah, I do. and we'll give you a ride. Uh, you can't go back to the house because we're still there. Okay, so do you have somewhere where you'd like to be taken to? That for 
430 amulet. And where are they able to, where do they hide to get close enough? If it's right? Melinda was very organized and not able to be gaslit into thinking that she was wrong. Something definitely came to a head. Did Melinda confront him about the missing money and the lies about having dinner and getting money from his mom? Jeff wanted to be praised for being a good provider without actually doing the providing. He didn't have a job and Anna did. How premeditated was this murder? It was at least from that day as Jeff orchestrated the day's timeline to keep other people away from the house. The fake burglaries could just have been a way to explain missing money so he could steal, but it could also have been a red herring all along in order to commit this crime. Days before the murder, Jeff complains of a fender bender that no one saw and was not recorded by police, the DMV, or insurance records. He attributed the scratches and injuries on his body and face from Melinda fighting for her life to the accident. So how premeditated was that accident? I think Melinda knew Jeff was the culprit of all the weird missing items, money, break-ins, flat tires, etc. Jeff knew Melinda was the one who could take down his entire life, and he wasn't going to let that happen. She was the one who ordered the security cameras. She was smart and driven. One time, someone cut the lines to the cameras, and Melinda had them fixed right away. She was watching that footage like a hawk, too. If Jeff was a hobgoblin version of Joffrey Lannister, Melinda was the female Tyrion, using her intellect and quick wit to undermine his manipulation. The next big fat lie. Despite not having a job, Jeff told Anna he was buying her a house for their little family. He told her he put a down payment on it already, despite not being able to afford the wedding venue. Bruce and Anna believed him. When asked, Anna admitted she never actually been to the house, knew the address, or knew the exact move-in date. It's an escrow, she said. And then things started going missing, and I don't think kids would do that. Like, if I had, like, $10 laying on the counter, and I went upstairs for a second, I'd come back, it was gone, and I'd be home alone. And this happened a lot. I had wallets go missing, I had to cancel my credit card and order a new one a bunch of times. But it really started with my dad's money envelope that he left with a bunch of money on the counter. I never saw it, but they said it was missing. We tore the house apart looking for it. And his bag and his laptop out of his car, he thinks. That... Does Kyle like to take keys and yes. <laughs> take the keys away from you guys? Does he hide them? Uh, he does not hide them. He'll just carry them around and jingle them. We'll be like, give him back, but he never, okay. he won't set him down. He okay. has them. So he takes them, but doesn't hide them. He'll run around just jingling on. He likes to do that. Okay. That's why we thought a few times when keys went missing, it might have just been Kyle, but a bunch of them were missing, and then, you know, all the alarms kept going off. Yeah, and there's no way Kyle had the keys at that, those times? No. No. We checked him as it was going off, like, first him. Mm -hmm. And when, when the car alarms went off, and who was yeah. usually home? I mean, did it vary, or were you guys all home? A few times happen? when I was there, it was like me, my mom, Jeff, Kyle. And a lot of times it was all of us except Megan. And uh, then a few times, apparently, when I wasn't at work, I don't know. And then we all noticed we were just walking by that one of the camera lines was cut, and we are all like, what the hell? And we all go over and look at so it. You all said a month ago, huh? Yeah, we were like, why? I'm surprised that they didn't take the whole camera. I'm very surprised too. They're not, like, it, why? Just it, why not even just it unplug taped. it? They just, it was cut. Perfect it's, cut. You know, yeah, and I could see that, you know, more destructive. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I was a little, when Jeff was telling me the, the same, I was a little surprised that they just didn't take the whole camera. Yes. Because it, it wasn't odd. mounted. Everything is, like, random. Nothing goes, like, nothing big is missing. Mm -hmm. I mean, tools, Jeff had a bunch of tools go missing. I try not to think about it because it pisses me off too much when stuff goes missing. So we have tools missing, we've had money tools, missing. Tools, my dad's else. bags, my dad's wallets, my wallets, cash, keys. Um, my dad had this funny wallet purse at one point. It was a clutch purse, but he thought it was a wallet. That one went missing too. And? And a lottery envelope with money. My dad, did, they did like a lottery pull at work or something. And Anna, did you guys, um, you could get into your front door, uh, your garage door? Does it have a coat on it? You get yes. in there? Okay. It's a three. Okay. 
how is Kyle with the baby? He's great. Great. If he sees her going outside once in a while, like, and she, he knows she's not supposed to, they'll, like, scoop her up and bring her over to me. And I'm just like, oh, thank you. You got caught. <laughs> but he likes her. He got jealous at first, but he got over it. Did, yeah, I was going to ask, yeah. Um, did, he, did he ever show his jealousy? I mean, did he ever um, hit Aurora or? No. No, he's not good with her. Okay. What about Jeff? Does he ever, uh, does he ever he get drink. drink? No. Not much. Does he have a temper? Um, he gets cranky, but that's about it. Right. He's like his face. Yeah. But he's okay. Right. Um, does he ever, you and him, issues ever? We don't um, fight, but we don't, no, nothing physical. Nothing ever physical. No, never. Right. I would have probably We're good. We not always make good. up. We're good. We've been great forever. Gotcha. Gotcha. Was there anything in the house? Um, so when things turned up missing at home, you said one time you said even you were home alone. Home alone. Like, and home alone. And things would missing. disappear off the counter. Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't understand. Now, how, I'm what freak would out, you? Cry. What would you? How would you explain that? When you say home alone, you mean you totally alone, alone. or was totally alone. not you and Jeff? Nobody, no baby, you? no nothing. Just me. Doors I'm locked. Me. I keep the doors locked. I'm very, like, right. weird about that. Sure. Now, would that be after there were keys missing? I mean, was, was your this explanation? This was before the keys. Before the keys were missing. I, um, that was just kind of gross. I started keeping my money in my shirt. Mm -hmm. It's the only way it doesn't go missing. Sure. I know it's okay. not sanitary, but it's the only way Money's I don't lose my money. Yeah. Do you recall any instances of it happening with, with anyone else? Most of us were home? usually home for all of these. Maybe one person missing, like my mom or Jeff or my dad. But everybody else would be at home when something would go missing. Something would go missing with uh, everyone home? Yeah. Or some a few times with just you home? Yeah, sometimes just me and my dad and Jeff. Yeah. In like a few years, if something's really bothering him, mm -hmm. he might have too many. Like you didn't really he doesn't do shots, so they have like a couple of beers with his friends most of the time. Okay. After the wedding, um, were you guys going to just keep living at the house, or do you have plans? We are waiting on our, we actually bought a house at Crown Point. Oh, nice. Yeah. Seriously. Awesome. So foreclosure, so it's taken a while to get the keys. Mm -hmm. Good for you. So. Did you, uh, do you know you financed that through? Um, Jeff. Check to the financing. And do you know exactly? Do you know the address on Crown Point? Um, it's right at the end of the street, and it's like where Hunt meets Crown Point. It's a fenced-in backyard. I like the house a lot. It's. Um, How long did uh, Jeff work for Berea, for the schools? Three years, four years. Okay. They say why the, what the layoffs were about? They've been laying people off that left and right like crazy. Mm -hmm. It was only a matter of time. It's like his buddy even got laid off before he did. Yeah. Did, did Jeff say where he got the money to pay for the house? No, um, he made, made it made it with the work and the rentals, and plus his uh, parents kind of come from money. I'd be willing to bet my left tit had Melanie not been murdered. Something beyond Jeff's control would have happened to derail escrow. Parents help him out, maybe? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. like his folks? Do you get along with them? Yeah. No, his mom's well. friendly. They, they're they always busy, though, so I don't see him a lot. Yeah. His dad's a big guy. He's, he's a little off-putting, but he's nice. Yeah, I get you. He's a teddy bear. You said that they're antisocial. Do they come to family events? Uh, if my parents try to meet up with them, like, they're usually busy and they won't. And then my parents are like, oh, they're antisocial. They hate us. It's like, well, no, they just don't have free time ever. And plus, they're divorced now and they don't like to be together. How was your mom physically? Like, would you, was she fit, strong person at all? No. Okay. She liked to believe that she's super strong, but... Yeah. She, I don't like saying this since she's gone, but she's a little overweight. That's okay. And she had bad knees, always had knee surgeries. Mm -hmm. um, Short. 
going going back a little bit, you said that uh, Jeff was in a car accident. Did you say that the airbag went off? Mm-hmm. And when this did that in uh, downtown Cleveland. It happened in downtown. When did that happen? Like two days ago. It was after Brown's game. Uh, so the guy T bombed him, and he was. I don't see his car having a lot of damage. Did it, does it have a lot of damage? What? Uh, he said it does. It's like in the shop or something. I'm not sure. Which car is it? It's the Envoy. The Envoy is in the shop. Do you know which shop? Is it the friend, the family friend? I don't know. No, not my mom's, but I don't know. And this happened on Sunday at what time? Um, I want to say like five-ish. Did he call you after the accident? Yeah. There is some big weird lie between Jeff and his mom and the Pleskovics. I think because Jeff's mom knew too much about who he truly is under the narcissistic mask. He didn't want to give Anna and her family any insight into this window. He knew Anna was way out of his league and he was terrified she was going to find that out too. I'd be interested to know what Jeff was telling his parents about himself, his finances, and the Pleskovics because he sure did put a lot of effort into keeping them away from one another. Jeff Skolan pleaded no contest on October 17, 2018 to his indictment on charges of aggravated murder felonious assault, tampering with evidence, and child endangerment. By doing so, Jeff avoided having to admit his guilt and preserved his right on appeal. He chose not to speak on his own behalf during the sentencing. The Pleskovic family, prosecutors, and a Strongsville police detective painted Jeff as a conniving and callous manipulator who stole from the family after they allowed him to move into their home. He staged crimes to cover up his thefts and then dined with the family after carrying out a gruesome murder. Jeff's lawyer, Joseph Petucci, had said previously in court that he and Jeff believed they had an affirmative defense, a signal that, had the case gone to trial, they were prepared to argue that Jeff acted in self-defense, which would have been completely disrespectful and ridiculous. Jeff was given a life sentence with the possibility of parole after 33 years, and I hope he's denied every single time. Thanks for listening to Mom's Murder Madness. We're available on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also find my mom content on TikTok and Facebook under my real name, Jessica Bailey Hassan.